Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone. This is Bree Noble, and welcome to the podcast. I'm excited to be here with a duo today. We've got Lilia Bogova and Bruna Parente, and we're going to be talking about running a multi-income stream music business with a team. Because honestly, like I could never do what all that I do by myself. I have to have a team, and I get a lot of questions about that. So we're going to talk about you know, how they're doing it all and how it works so well doing it together and all the different income streams that they are running. So before we get into that, I'd love to know from both of you, how did you get into music? And then how did that kind of progress as you, you know, got into your adult life and got you to where you are now? I personally got into music pretty gradually. Like I actually started out with dance. So that was actually my first interest in music was dancing to the music. I got more interested in actually playing the music in high schools. I started piano and singing when I was 14. That was in early high school. Then in late high school, I started electric guitar to play metal music. And that was at 17. And I knew that I really wanted to pursue a career in creative arts. I didn't want to do something else and just kind of make music on the side sometimes. I really wanted to focus on that. So when I went to college, my focus was on music performance and composition. So I did that. I'm really glad that I did that. That's always helped me to feel more cohesive about my identity as a professional musician. And then we started the band Carcasa in late 2016. That's when me and Bruno met and Now, he plays drums and I play guitar. So between the two of us, we have the main rhythm sections of a metal band covered. And we've been doing that ever since. We have three albums out with Carcasa. And then we have one mini album, an EP, out with our acoustic duo project, which is simply called Lilia and Bruno. And that's where we play folky acoustic songs. And we like doing it all. Hmm. Yeah. So for me, I started uh, joining bands or forming my own bands very early age, 14, 15. I started drums and guitar at the same time. So I play guitar too. And today, piano also. Uh, Mm -hmm. I teach piano too. I learned that later. But in the beginning, guitar, drums, no music background, none of my parents play anything or my sister or anybody in my family. I'm the only musician in my family, the only one. And then I started these bands. Uh, And then I moved to the U.S. in 2016. And then we met. We we used to talk a bit via Facebook, a little bit before that. And then when, when I moved to start a career in California, L.A., we we met at the Guitar Center. Hollywood. Guitar Center Hollywood was, was where th- this yeah, band actually did, physically yeah. started. First, was our first, and yeah, first meeting person, there. Yeah. And then we started uh, having a rehearsals. First songs. And that was it. Then she n- knew this guy, Brian, who could play the bass. Yeah. And the band was formed right there. Yeah. And we, uh, the year after, we released uh, the first EP, like a three-song EP. And after that, the first album, the full length album, second album, third album. But I started in music, playing this kind of music already. Heavy thrash metal, metal in general. My first bands were thrash metal bands. So I started in the business or started playing music, playing the kind of music that I play today. 
Wow. So when you were, you know, when you first met, when you were building up your band, making your EPs and stuff, what were you guys doing to support yourselves at that time? Were you working other jobs or working music jobs? Yeah, teaching good, music. Yeah, good question. Yeah. So I started teaching music and dance actually during my college years because I would teach part time music, dance and writing when I was in college. And even before that, in high school, I taught dance and gymnastics. So I've always been teaching performing arts pretty much. And then after college, I was focusing largely on the teaching music. So yeah, that's how we supported ourselves financially. And also that's how we got our rehearsal space to be able to write the songs. The music lesson studio I worked at, that was very essential to this band being able to form. Because now, ever since we've been in this house in Alabama, We've had our own studio. It's the lower level of the house. But before then, back in our California days, we were in North Los Angeles County, California, where everyone lives in apartments. So we would not have been able to have anywhere to rehearse if it hadn't been for me working at a music lesson studio. So that was a really big blessing to us. Yeah, for me too. uh, My first jobs here were related to music as well, teaching lessons. But at the time, we used to teach uh, for the studios. There's a music school. We used to teach their students their lessons. One, two years later, we started our music school that we have until today. Like To this day, we have this school of music. But the first year, a year and a half, was teaching lessons to these studios in in the Valley, LA too, Beverly Hills. Yes, yes. Back then when we were in Los Angeles County, California, we didn't get to start out right away being independent musical entrepreneurs. We started out as being contract teachers for other companies. And at some points we were balancing working through like five or six different companies at the same time teaching like a few students this one a few students that one in LA a lot of parents want you to drive to their house because there's so much traffic so like we were the ones you know struggling through traffic and it's like oh sorry I'm late there were a lot of accidents whatever so yeah yeah and one of those studios was the studio that we had the rehearsals so one of those music schools uh, it was the place that we had the first rehearsals. And actually, until the day we moved yeah, to Alabama, it was our rehearsal space still. Yes, we used that one, that yeah, place one for, of those schools. for rehearsal and teaching. We yeah. used that space for other things, too. We have a music video uh, that was okay. shot there. We have some interviews that we, like this, that we filmed there. We used that space for multiple things. Yeah, it was really valuable to us yeah. before we were able to get our own personal studio. But since we've moved to Alabama in late 2020, for that reason of being able to have our own property and become fully independent entrepreneurs, since we've moved to this state, we have not worked as employees for anyone else. And that yeah. was a huge life goal that I had. Like Ever since I was in high school, I knew I wanted to be a fully independent work for myself entrepreneur. And it's been such a blessing that we're able to do that here in central Alabama. So now we have our home studio where we do all those same things. We do the lessons, we do our rehearsals, our songwriting sessions, and some music videos and photos. Yeah, we have two music videos on our channel that were shot downstairs here at our studio. The only thing we don't do here is record. For that, we go to another studio, recording studio. And our music is mixed and mastered in Europe. Oh. Uh, here we have all the rehearsals, the pre-production of the album It's is here. We just don't record here. That's very cool. So when you worked for those other music studios, and that sounded crazy, like you're you're working for five, six different oh, ones. You're all over. Yeah, it's yeah, like that. Yeah. Gosh, in California, especially LA, there's so many music lesson programs. There's so much competition. That through one studio, realistically, you'd get a few students, but nowhere near enough to make a living off of them. So then you have to supplement with another studio and another. And then we were also starting our own independent music lessons programs called Sunshow School of Music. We had to do that concurrently while working through the other studios. 
And then balance, because some of our employers were getting weirdly yeah. jealous of it. So her, we had to Yeah, School of navigate Rock. It. Probably heard about that. School uh-huh. of Rock. We, we had bit, lessons yeah. with School of Rock, too. Yeah. All those famous uh, School of Music. In, in LA, in California, we we were there, yeah, some, including School of Rock. Yeah, the like School of Rock. Then some independent ones. Yeah, honestly, it was the space that allowed us to rehearse. Like we were talking about, it was actually an independent studio. Yeah, it was a local business. It was not a chain because usually those big chains are a lot more restrictive. So that was a really big blessing. I'm so glad I found that. And place. then when we <laughs> moved. Uh, then here. the school is what we ha- we don't yeah. teach lessons to anybody else. We have our school and that's it. We teach yeah. lessons here at home. Yeah. Yeah. Was that scary to go out on your own when you have to get all your own students? You no, know, it's yeah. not nearly as much as you'd think because we happened to transition during the pandemic. So I feel like that was the best time to transition. So yeah. I've been like waiting. I had been waiting for the right time to make those kinds of changes. You know, I'd been thinking about moving to another state ever since college. I was like, do I really want to stay here in Southern California with their ridiculously high prices? But, you know, I was looking for the right time to make that kind of move to where I wouldn't have to lose too much in the process. And when that pandemic started, it actually gave us a lot of opportunities because one of the first things I did was resign from some of the other studios where I worked for the company and yeah during the pandemic was the easiest time to do that because it was just only natural they were closing up the space anyway so that made that transition easier and then some of the students we had taught through there wanted to keep learning with us online yeah we managed to when we moved to keep a good amount of students that we had in California online. Yes. So we moved with all the students that we had living here. The first three months were from California. Yes, because... Online. And then gradually we started getting local students. Then now we have a bit of both. We have a bunch of local students, 40 plus local students from here. And we still have online students from other states, yes. including California. Yes, and actually the pandemic gave us the opportunity to make that transition. The fact that everyone was learning online anyway made it so that even when we were on the road, so we drove in a U-Haul from California to Alabama with our cat and our dog in it. And sometimes we were teaching lessons at the end of the day after driving. In fact, there was a time, the hotel room. Yeah, in the hotel. Yeah, not in the U-Haul, in the hotel. The hotel room. We used to yeah. get, like, let's stop in this city yeah. to rest the next day. And we used to teach lessons in the hotel room, like one in a corner and the other yes. on the other corner of the room. And then when we moved to Alabama, at first we were in an apartment just while we, we were renting, while we yeah. explored the area and get to know it. And then at that time, it was still late 2020, so... It was all online lessons in there. And then when we found a house where we could set up our own studio, we started inviting students to come in person when, um, in general, things were reopening to in-person interactions. And it's worked really well for us here, super, super well. I feel like we are offering the community something that's not offered a lot, which is musical education. Yeah, here, in this whole area that we live here, in this county, they're like, Two or three other schools. So all the competition we had in California, here we don't have. It's us, another school, and another school, and that's it. Not you against 300 schools. So we're doing well because of this. Uh, We were uh, feeling this demand that existed here for music lessons in a place that there were no music schools yeah. or one or two at most. I'm saying. That's awesome that you can do that. And I'm, honestly, the the pandemic was a lucky break for you guys because it made it easier for you to break away. It made it easier for pandemic you. Pandemic to- was good for us. Yeah, I mean, it, yep. it's almost like a bit of survivor's guilt in a way because like, we know it was such a tragic situation for the world, yeah. but we were fortunate enough to not get sick during that time and it allowed us the opportunity to make these transitions that we had been wanting to make we're just trying to find our window to walk through so yeah it actually worked out well for us yeah i think that's that was true for actually a lot of people that that, that did well in the pandemic for sure 
I'm curious now that you're in a new area, how do you go about getting new students? Okay, yeah, through our lesson studios, something that's been really useful is Google my business listings. So I just worked a lot of SEO, the search engine optimization for people who don't know the term SEO, to get our website to rank well for our local area. And Google my business has been really helpful. I ask for reviews because I know that Google loves pages with reviews. So whenever I can, ask my students to leave a review and we have plenty of them. And then um, we also joined local Facebook groups and those have been really helpful. And then also like word of mouth because our local area really likes setting up arts related events like street fairs and art walks. So we set up booths there to physically meet people face to face and give them information about our music education offerings. So all of that combined has been really useful. One thing that helps is is, uh, local events. There are art walks here. In the beginning, when we moved on the first year, we participated on all the art art walks that were here, like the whole year, almost every month. So local events, now we don't go for the art walks anymore. We do the parades, 4th of July parade and the Mardi Gras parade. We go there with a card, decorated car, and we, and we throw cards. Yeah, candies on both with sides. cards. Yeah. Candies with cards. So we do this parades. Also, uh, like she said, the local groups on face private groups on Facebook related to the city. This blah, 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 city watch. This other blah, 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 city, city watch. These groups, they have like average 16,000 people, 20,000, 60,000. They're all locals, all people from here. These groups have help a lot. When you join these groups and you post there uh, you, about your school and whatever you do, you get business from there. So one thing I recommend is this local private groups mm-hmm. of the city that, you, that you're living, that you're working on. I joined like six groups, yeah. <laughs> all the cities around here. I say, but- Every week I post about the school there and on the consultations we have here before the student signs up and everything, a good number of them, they come from this group. Yeah, I saw your post on the group. Yeah, yeah. Between the two of us, I'd say we're in a lot of local community oriented yeah. Facebook groups, like probably each like 12, 15 groups. Facebook the two of us. for business. Mm-hmm. Still. Well, if you were looking we're for biz, if yeah. you're looking for a more business, local business, Facebook still works. Yeah, yeah, I've found that Facebook is helpful for local business. Yeah. I know for online business, is just so much competition. Like if you're trying to sell digital products, because we also make digital products, and we also post about them on Facebook. But it appears that there's just so many links to digital products over and over and over on Facebook. If you're looking for local 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 customers, if you offer some kind of service like us, music lessons, the private groups, they are still very helpful. That's a really, really great tip. Reach out to you. Yeah, I would recommend that. Do for this purpose. Still good. Yeah, let's say Google my business listings. It's definitely worth taking the time to optimize your Google page if you're looking for in-person business because as I, the majority of students find us either through Google search is seems to be the top one and then Facebook seems to be in and the, the local events uh, participate yes. join on local events as much as you can parades is parades uh, art walks local events that the locals come show up do that that will help you a lot. yeah those are some really great tips So I'm curious about your digital products because you've now talked about you've got your band, you've got your uh, music school, and now you have digital products. You have a lot of different streams of income. What kind of digital products do you guys sell? Yeah, so the number one, because, you know, as far as digital product offerings, I've had to go through some trial and error to find out something that actually works. What's worked the best, now I offer this in um, print and digital, but I have comic books called Lilia the Inner Demon Crusher. But it on the cover, it has me with my electric guitar going, yeah, crush inner demons, live in freedom. And actually had a cartoonized version of myself on the cover of it. And that comic book is basically a parody on an artist's inner healing journey from battling the inner demons that restrict them from 
the success they're after into crushing them and finding that personal freedom to be the artist that you want to be. But it's like a silly parodied way of yeah, knowing it. That and the That's, the the band's music. The, Music, the band's music on all on the streaming platforms, Spotify, iTunes, all the streaming platforms you can think of. Yeah, we are there. Yes, and that are. also gives you a generator revenue with the uh, the distribution company. Yeah, so that helps. They every week they deposit something that they you know they they do a do their math to to send you something. So uh, every every week we got a deposit from the distribution capital. Yeah, and then something we've offered recently through the music studio. So I've had to make a lot of practice videos for my students because like, oh, I have trouble remembering that song or that chord, especially for voice lessons. They say like, uh, sometimes I have trouble knowing how to practice because in the lesson, I just follow what you do, but at home. I can't really do that. Like, I don't have a keyboard I can match pitch to or anyone to sing along to. So I started filming practice videos for them. And at first, I would just film the video myself and just do it. Then I started getting more intentional about, like, oh, I'm going to make this high quality and actually post these for other people. So I started posting them on a Patreon page. And yeah, it started out with just the practice videos I'd have to give to my students to help them. But if it was something where I feel like other people would want to learn this too, then I go ahead and post it there. That's fairly new, but I am starting to promote that more. Like every time that I have a student who says, man, I would love to start, but my schedule and my budget is an issue, I direct them to our Patreon page to uh, learn from there, especially if they're interested in voice lessons, because that's most of what I've had to film for students. Therefore, that's mostly what I put there. I found that singing seems to be harder for people to practice on their own. And also when I have a student who says, okay, I have to pause lessons for a while because I've gotten busy and my work has gotten slow. My Again, every time they say that their budget or schedule is of concern, I go ahead and direct them there. And yeah, I'm really glad that I did that because I also refer my current students to it because that's why I started filming practice videos in the first place. Because I did have students who say that they have trouble remembering exactly how to practice mm. and they find that really useful too. Yeah, I would imagine that is really useful. And again, another stream of income from something that you've already, you're already doing. So that's yes. super smart. I think that that is the best way to find different streams of income because there are a lot of artists and entrepreneurs out there who are like, oh, if only I can think of some doohickey to sell to people that they'd want to buy. And like, but you're looking for some doohickey that people want to buy. Think about the things that you naturally have to make. Like, what are people saying? Oh, I have trouble remembering what to practice. Or, ah, oh, these lesson books are really boring. I wish that there was a better lesson book to learn piano, yeah, and, stuff and, like that. And uh, with the band, we have this uh, on the streaming platforms, our, our music and all of them. We also sell merchandise online on, yeah. our, on our website. You go to our, web, uh, to our website, you're going to see a store. Our merchandise is there, shirts, water bottles, uh, uh, C the, the CDs. We have the physical copies of the CDs. Uh, on the store, we, we sell all that on the shows, right? On the merchandise table there. We also sell that sell that online. Yeah, that's definitely another great stream of income. Uh, and I'm curious. So, how do you guys kind of divide and conquer? Like, how do you work together uh, yeah. to build your income? Yeah, it's a really good question. Like, what we do first off is think about where our interests and specialties lie. So first off, in the instruments that we play and teach. So in the band, Carcasa, I do voice and guitar, and then Bruto does drums. And then when teaching our lessons, I do guitar, piano, and singing. And then Bruno does guitar, piano, and drums. And we also assess our levels of expertise. Like, for example, I like very much enjoy playing technical classical piano music in my free time so when there's a student who says like well I've been playing piano for a while and I want to get into more technically challenging classical music I go ahead and take this student for myself 
Whereas when there's a student who says, well, I'm a beginner to piano and I want to play more popular music, like the yeah. you know, modern hits, um, Bruno likes to take those we students. Div- we, like, yeah. when we, people ask this, tell me the secret mm-hmm. of you guys, <laughs> yeah. blah, 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 right? We get that question all the time from interviewers, from people in general. They look at us, they see success in us. So they ask, they ask all the time. And we always reply. Two words, teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. There's no, there's no secret or recipe. Teamwork. I do this, you do that. I go to the right, you go to the left. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. That's why I'd say, like, there's no other. Yeah. Like, we each do some booking of events. I book promotional events and student appointments. I book the band Bruno shows. Bruno likes to book the band you shows. Know, so, uh, we yeah. have five things going on the, the school, the band. The acoustic project is a totally different thing. We also do pet sitting. Yes, because we just love animals, so we, we, why not? Yeah, we have a pet sitting service and Lydia's brand. Yeah, my personal the brand Lydia is... Lydia Demon Crusher. That yeah. is another brand with comics, with events, all that. So what we do, we, we do a teamwork on all that. Well, we both work on all these five things with separate... Yeah. Tasks. You do this, I do that. You do this, you do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For example, when we make promotional videos for our music lessons and also for my Inner Demon Crusher brand, like, I take the time to decide what to say on the video and film and edit it because I like doing the technical editing part, like fade in, fade out, flying captions, stuff like that. And then Bruno likes to take them and See what other groups he can share them. Yeah, to. I help with the promo yeah, things promotion. that I'm not in charge of the the, the artistic part. Let's yeah. say the tech. I do the promotion and vice versa. Uh, so yeah. we both we help each other all the time. Uh, we, uh, if there's something I can do, she can. If there's something I cannot do, she can. And we both. Work. Yeah, then uh, you know we both scout for events all the time, like places we can present yeah. or perform something. And like when I'm scouting for events, so this is what happened to book our Halloween party event. I was looking for possible events to do to promote my personal brand, the Inner Demon Crusher brand. And I stumbled upon a local show producer who was putting on a Halloween event at a venue that we really like a lot. And so I was like, okay, that also seems like a good opportunity for our band, Karakaza, because she was saying, I want to book rock, metal, and gothic music over here. So, and so then I reached out to her to book that. So um, basically... That event, for example, yeah, you see... Uh, we have it, our eyes open. Yeah, it, it turned out to be a band show, but also she's going to perform on that same show yeah. with her brand. Yes, what I do... Nothing? So to promote my personal Inner Demon Crusher brand, the types of performances that I do like solo dance and musical theater style type, like Broadway type, sing, dance, and acting it out. So more like solo stuff. And so that's another route that we're pursuing yeah, in now. In other words. Shows where we can do both a band and a solo. In act. other words, to have to live as a musician, you cannot just be a performer or a mm, producer yeah. or a musician. You need a multiverse. This thing of multiverse is on Marvel. That's the future of everything. Ah, you can so. you cannot live by doing one thing. I I'm a musician. I play guitar. Mm-hmm. Period. You're not gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? The multiverse is the future. You need to be a multi-faced musician. You play. You record. You ha- you teach guitar, drums, whatever instrument you play. You need this multiverse of things to be successful. Yeah, I think so. If you if you just want to. Play music and that's it, probably not going to make. You need a multiverse around yourself, Mm -hmm. multiverse of things. Yep, I agree. And that is also part of, you know, having a a complete brand. You're not just one thing. Like you are a whole brand and a whole self. And I think that's diverse. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think that word brand is very essential because so many musicians think about their music. They think that they are their music. And what I got to do is, promote and perform and write my music and they don't really think that much about the whole brand around it but like oh essentially you're a brand where music is one of the things that you do 
But to put on a good musical show, like just focusing on live performance, you also have to think about things like your wardrobe and your stage presence and what you're going to say into the microphone and what kind of footage you want from it, how you're going to edit it. So just that alone, yeah. there's so many other factors besides just that one. I noticed on the other bands, we go play, right? We just came back from Tampa, Florida, for example, yeah. uh, last week. Just came back from Florida. One thing I noticed on the other bands we play with, the musicians, they have a hard time with that. So yeah. they put everything for the manager. Say, oh, you will take care of everything. We just go on stage, plug and play. Mm-hmm. Or not even that. They don't want a manager. And then they, they have a hard time with everything else. So either they have a manager, yeah. takes care of everything. And most of the times... This manager will kind of, you know, you heard about managers in music. Mm -hmm. They do their thing. Either that or a band with no manager and the band members, they try to figure these things out and they can't. That takes time to figure out for sure. It takes some trial and error. Like I'd say that every time we have a gig, we learn at least one. We learn a little thing. At least, yeah. (laughs) Ditto. Jinx. (laughs) We learn at least one new thing. We're like, okay, that could go a little bit better next time but one thing you have to keep in mind is i need to improve my operation yeah at all times every day or at least every time you go perform or you go record a new album you need this mentality you need this on your mind all the time i need to improve my operation i need to improve because a band is an operation that is going on you do multiple things so that is a there's an operation so you need to have that in mind. I need, to, I need to improve this. So every show, you have to pay attention. All the elements that are going on around you and see how you can improve that uh, for your band. Pay attention to what the, the mistakes of the other bands too. I'll see that guy, oh, he's trying to carry his thing and do something else. That kind of thing. You need to improve your operation. That, that should be your target. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love that. And that is absolutely true. You you can always just get a little bit better every day. And then it's amazing how fast you're going to be a lot better if you're just getting a little bit better every day. Yeah. So this has been really great. It's been great to hear how you guys work together, how you guys took advantage of, you know, the hard parts of the pandemic and worked it in your favor, how you've been able to build like a completely new uh, situation in your new location. Very impressed with you guys. So I would love to know how our listeners and people that are watching can connect with you online, all your different parts of your brand. Yeah, so, there's several places. Yeah, yeah. So starting with the, the band, if you Google Carcaza, K-A-R-K-A-Z-A, you're going to have, the first thing that's going to pop up is our website. On our website, uh, carcasa.com, on the bottom of the page, you have all of our social medias. On all of the social medias that we are, we are under that name, K-A-R-K-A-Z-A, Carcasa. If you uh, search for that on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, we are on TikTok too. You're going to find us there. On the streaming platforms, Spotify and iTunes are the most famous platforms for music right we are there but we are in another 50 platforms <laughs> yes we are in so the you small ones. anywhere pretty much you type k-a-r-k-a-z-a you're gonna find us there yeah is a the the band's logo is a black background with this a scorpion logo with this <laughs> it's a little oh, this oh, is the what? band's logo a white scorpion uh, on a black background, yeah. carcass. So it's very easy yeah. to find. And then actually, so we were talking about Sunshine School of Music, our education program. And we were talking about how we're a local business in central Alabama. But I do want viewers to know that they can actually learn with us online too, because yes. we still have online students from we all We have around students the in California. We have students in Connecticut. Sometimes even Canada too. Canada. So. We're yeah. very much anywhere who can... Online. You still can yeah. learn music with us. Yeah, and that is at sunshowmusic.com. Sunshow is spelled S-U-N-C-H-O. So sunshowmusic.com. And my personal brand, Lilia the Inner Demon Crusher, that's how I do mental health advocacy, like raise awareness for the mental health of mainly artists and entrepreneurs. But It appeals to anyone who feels like they have inner conflicts that they need to resolve. 
And you can find that at liliademoncrusher.com. And then we also have our acoustic music. Yes. Which if is, you're not into heavy metal, yeah. this kind of rock music, we also have an acoustic project, just me and Lilia, called yeah. Lilia and Bruno. So if yeah. you type Lilia and Bruno anywhere uh, on Google, it's going give to give you our website, liliaandbruno.com. Yeah. But if you type that on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, we are there as well. And on the streaming platforms as well. Yeah. It's a neat, well, what we have released so far with this new project is a three-song EP. It came out in Christmas 23. So it's something like brand new. It just came out. Wow. You guys are, I don't know how you keep up with all these socials for all these different things, but I'm very impressed. And like I said in the beginning, it can only be done for teamwork, right? Yep. Sure. I say for sure we learned how to prioritize what kind of content we make, like through all the practicing, because we post on social media every week. And over time, we've learned what kind of content is the right balance of being simple to make, yet also effective. Because there have been times that I do try to film a video that takes way longer than I expected it to. And on top of that, it doesn't even perform that well. It's like, oh, gosh, so much effort underperformed. And times that I made something simple that performed well and everything in between. It's like optimizing what yeah. you do. And Plus, something that will help you keeping track of all that is the schedule. Yeah. You need your posts to be on a certain schedule. So, for example, for the band, is every Friday. For uh, uh, her brand, is Monday. Yeah. Along with the, the school. So, you need a schedule. Not like, oh, I feel like posting today. I don't know, maybe. Yeah. You need this day for this, this day for that. I like checklists a lot too. Like whatever, Schedule. Whenever you're overwhelmed by tasks, I feel like just writing it all out in a checklist and just checking. I was like very visually satisfying to go and cross something off. It's just that little moment. Like, like yeah. it's one thing to know I did this, but it's another to actually see it checked Like out. I always Ooh. say, with organization, everything is possible. Mm -hmm. We could... Even have more brands. We could have 10 brands instead of five with organization as possible. With organization, schedule, a day and time for everything. You can do many, many things. Yes, you can. Oh, that's a great ending to this episode. Thank you so much for all these tips. I'm sure they've been super helpful for everybody. And congratulations on all that you guys have achieved. And I can't wait to see we, where you guys are even in a few years. So thank you so much for everything you've shared today. Thank, Thank you, you very great. much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you on this podcast, too. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.